Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard for 68.7 billion dollars, which is insane to think about. And then I'm not only talking about the amount of money, but also about the enormous impact that it will have on the games industry moving forward. In this video, I want to focus on five big important changes this will have on gaming as a whole, in particular on Sony and how they should react, but more on that in a moment. Let's start with number one. I namely think that this is very positive for Activision Blizzard. Remember when Activision was making other games than Call of Duty? Prototype comes to mind, a dark open world superpower game where you would wreck everything in the city, you had these cool shapeshift powers. They also did a Wolverine game and a pretty good Transformers game back in 2012. But yeah, Radical Entertainment behind Prototype closed down and Raven and High Moon Studios behind Wolverine and Transformers respectively are now all working on Call of Duty instead. Skylanders was a huge success but thanks to them releasing a new game and new toys every year that you had to buy the success took a nosedive and the studios behind those games would then go on to remaster Crash Bandicoot and Spyro which were pretty successful but after the real new game Crash 4 did not set the world on fire developer Toys for Bob was turned into a support developer for Warzone instead. Vicarious Visions, after the brilliant Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 remake and the reason Diablo 2 resurrected would go on to make another remake, right? No, they would likely lose their name after fully merging with Blizzard. The CEO, Bobby's ultimate goal other than to get away with everything he did, was to turn Blizzard into another Activision studio, cranking out yearly hits. So instead of working on interesting projects themselves, all these smaller Activision Blizzard studios would turn into support developers for the few big franchises they had. But Microsoft has a ton of other games, so they don't need a new Call of Duty every year and they got Warzone going on all the time anyways. So I could totally see Xbox giving those teams that work on Call of Duty more time to really push the series forward for once. I used to love the Call of Duty campaigns, but they totally got less appealing over the years. We don't have a lot of big budget single player first person shooters these days, so the possibility that these studios do not have to hit an unrealistic deadline each time and can really focus on bringing their vision to life could be very exciting. And well, according to behind the scenes talks as reported on by Jason Schreier, it seems that Xbox actually agrees and could ditch the yearly release schedule for Call of Duty. But it has not been confirmed yet and if it happens it may not happen until next year or later but I totally think that this could mean higher quality Call of Duty games. And the other franchises would be dead under the previous Activision but I think that Microsoft would really benefit from a diverse Activision lineup so they can fill out Game Pass each month and also appeal to a way broader audience. Where Sony has Ratchet and & Clank and Sackboy and Nintendo is of course always the king in terms of family friendly games, Microsoft always lacked these type of titles. But now they have Spyro or Crash and even Skylanders. And of course having the Blizzard games puts them in a way better position to make the PC Game Pass more attractive by maybe including a WoW membership or bonuses like card packs for hard stone so those audiences that would never like be interested in game pass are now jumping to that. I don't think it will really change the Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 rollout. Overwatch 2 is likely next year and Diablo 4 maybe three years away. Apart from the fact that these titles might of course be Xbox exclusive now. That is big change number two. Obviously some Activision Blizzard games will only release on Xbox and PC moving forward. Of course if you liked the video so far then leaving a like on it would really help me out. And subscribe because every Sunday I have a big game video like this going over recent gaming trends. I will just say to players out there who are playing Activision Blizzard games on Sony's platform. It's not our intent to pull community away from that platform we remain committed to that and this according to Xbox boss Phil Spencer and this of course makes sense it would be weird to remove Warzone from PlayStation when it's already going on or take away games that people already paid for but dissimilar to what we heard with Bethesda 
but all those games, even Starfield and Elder Scrolls, will not release on PlayStation anymore. Bloomberg reports that Microsoft plans to keep making some of Activision games for PlayStation consoles, but will also keep some content exclusive to Xbox, said a person familiar with the company's thinking. I think it's obvious that if any of the smaller Activision games like Tony Hawk or maybe even Guitar Hero come back, that they will not be released on PlayStation. So Crash Bandicoot and Spyro went from a Sony property to being Xbox exclusive. Maybe they plan to bring World of Warcraft to Xbox, which has been rumored for a while. If there were plans for a PlayStation release, then I don't think that will happen anymore. But the big question of course is, what happens to Call of Duty? In the US, the best-selling game of 2021 on PlayStation was Call of Duty Vanguard, with on number 3, the Call of Duty from the year prior. Like, a lot of people are playing those games, so it would be huge if they don't release on PlayStation anymore. Maybe I already saw this tweet from Phil saying that he had good calls this week with leaders at Sony. I confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of Activision Blizzard and our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. But the word desire is of course key here, so this doesn't really confirm anything. What if Microsoft wants something in return that Sony doesn't want to give? then Microsoft could still take Call of Duty away. And keeping Warzone on PlayStation still means that that console has a Call of Duty, so they could then still do something else with all the future titles. Or they could go the Minecraft route and keep Call of Duty a multi-platform release. I personally think that something will happen with Call of Duty though, like maybe they will spin off the campaign into its own thing and that will then be exclusive for Xbox or the zombie mode. There are rumors about a remaster for the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer maybe that will now be released as an xbox exclusive overwatch 2 is of course really a continuation of the overwatch multiplayer we already have on playstation so maybe overwatch 2 will still release but i think diablo is like a big get as an exclusive and doesn't really have like an esports thing that you want to have as many eyes on as possible so i think that that game will totally be like the big exclusive and even if all those like big franchises from Activision Blizzard are still appearing on PlayStation, Microsoft will still have the upper hand with Game Pass. Because big change number three following this acquisition is that Game Pass will be insane to compete with. It was already kind of crazy, but now it's on another level. Microsoft already announced that they want to put as many Activision games as possible on the service. So just like with Bethesda, we can expect a massive drop at some point with all those titles. But then also moving forward, all the Activision games will be launching day one on the service. So even if all the future Call of Duties are still coming to PlayStation, you will have to pay $70 there to play it. So while you only need to pay $10 for a subscription on Xbox to play that same game. Like, let's not forget that you and me are hardcore gamers and want to be up to date on the gaming news, play multiple games a year and also really care about good stories and single player titles. The majority of people are not like that. The best selling games on the PlayStation Store are always the sports games and the shooters. One of the best selling PlayStation exclusives is likely God of War at almost 20 million copies sold, which is insane. But if you think about the install base of the PS4 at 116 million, we see that not even 20% of the owners of the console bought God of War as they're mostly playing Call of Duty. So when the next-gen consoles become more available, likely in 2023, when this deal is closed, so when we know if Call of Duty is like an exclusive or not, more casual gamers will have to decide to which platform they want to buy. And if they see that Xbox has Call of Duty and many other games that they might want to try out for a $15 a month subscription, it's a way better deal than having to buy all these titles for 70 bucks each. Like this week's big release, Rainbow Six Extraction, is also included in Game Pass, while you have to pay $40 to play the same game on PlayStation. And I would not be surprised if Ubisoft brings more titles to Game Pass if this proves to be successful. You already got the full EA library on the Game Pass with the Mass Effect trilogy being added recently. You also get early access to all the brand new EA games and this is next to all the Bethesda titles, all the Activision titles and Microsoft's own first party titles day one 
on the same service. I of course really can't wait for Horizon, that new story trailer looked insane and God of War will probably be amazing too. So if I look at it from a personal perspective, PlayStation will totally remain my platform of choice. But for the majority of gamers, two big exclusives per year is not going to be enough anymore to compete with what Microsoft is offering and especially what they will offer in the future. In a few years from now, they will launch banger after banger that might even rival the quality of some of Sony's games. So big change number four is totally that Sony has to react. They have to do something. And of course, they don't have the market capital to go out and buy an EA or Ubisoft. At the time of writing, Microsoft's market cap is $2.3 trillion. Market cap wise, making a 68.7 billion acquisition is like for Sony with a 146 billion market cap to make a 4.4 billion acquisition. And this according to Carol, an analyst in a gamesindustry.biz article. Like you really cannot buy anything looking at this list and this only the sort of market cap for each company while the actual price to acquire these companies is going to be way higher. So unless Sony wants to take a huge risk by spending a ton of money they don't really have to acquire one of these companies maybe it's possible that would be wild but yeah it's not really likely now i do think that this acquisition will lead to a big change in how they approach their game pass competitor called project spartacus i talked about it extensively in a previous sunday video i will leave a link to it in the video description but in short sony seems to want to combine playstation plus and playstation now as their go-to subscription. So with a catalog of games, hopefully more impressive than PlayStation Now, but so far it seemed unlikely that PlayStation's Project Spartacus would ever include day one first party releases. Well, maybe they want to rethink that now that Microsoft also has all the Activision Blizzard games. Of course, there are layers to what a PlayStation first party exclusive is. I think Horizon and God of War are really like the final cards that Sony is going to play, but maybe have Returnal on the service day one, Ratchet and Clank already there. And really make sure that third party games like a Rainbow Six Extraction also release day one on that surface. I totally think that they have to be way more bold with this now that Microsoft is taking another massive step. The surface should also include a tier for backwards compatibility with maybe even PS1, PS2, PS3. There was a patent for this as well, so that would be great. And Sony will of course be really focusing on PSVR 2 as something that you cannot get elsewhere. While you could totally say that Microsoft is maybe controlling a little too much right now, I would argue that having a more dangerous Microsoft is totally great for the competition between Xbox and PlayStation because Sony can get cocky when they're number one and nobody can touch them but now they really gotta react and hopefully make some more consumer friendly moves. I'm just curious what their plan is right now. They already laid the groundwork a little bit by partnering with big new studios made up of veteran developers. They're all working on a new IP, multiplayer focused because that's really something that Sony is lacking right now, especially now that Activision Blizzard games might be exclusive to Xbox, at least some of them. But what this deal also shows is that the gaming industry is bigger than ever and that more eyes are on it and more big companies think that it really has a big future. So it's not the three players anymore. Netflix namely recently said in an investor call that they are aiming to have the absolute best gaming service in the industry. And they cannot do that without buying any companies. Also Amazon, after the success of New World, they said that they are convinced that games could be the company's largest entertainment sector which is wild if you think about the fact that they are making the most expensive TV show ever with The Lord of the Rings that is approaching the budget of 1 billion. So yes, another angle you could take is that you might be happy that Microsoft out of the big tech giants bought a gaming studio because we don't know what Netflix would do if they bought Ubisoft for example. Interesting time nevertheless and we of course still got one change. Big change number 5 is a good one. Bobby Kotick, the CEO from Activision Blizzard, will likely be gone after the deal closes. So there's a way better chance that the workplace culture at Activision Blizzard actually improves now that Microsoft is coming in. They already said that they really want to change it. I, I just think that this is great news for the developers who were like not really happy 
and of course with like leadership getting away with everything all the time yeah I, I can imagine that working there was not really like a, a great experience so hopefully this will change it and yeah I think there's a good chance that it actually might of course I'm curious to hear your theories about all this this deal the acquisition in the comments down below the video is already long I could have gone even longer but I think these are the most important things at least from what I collected and what I thought um, but yeah we will really have to wait and see how it all shakes out of course next week I will be back with another Sunday video in the meantime there will be other cool content here on the channel so make sure you subscribe check out my previous video on the biggest open world games coming in 2022 leave a like would really help me out and I'll see you soon goodbye